was a pen passing around with the sign-in sheet. Where did the pen end up? Passed it right there. Is anyone having any trouble setting this up? Anyone need a little help? You want to set up your WordPress to get it to that point to the dashboard? Question?
actually was. Did you name your database? All right, anyone else? We might be ready to go. Final questions? You need to have it ready to go.
So this time it took us only 25 minutes. I'm sure next time it'll go much faster. Um, but this is one of the downsides of this, obviously, that every time we come in, we have to set up our website. For the first few sessions, yes, we will have to create a brand new empty website. But I will then eventually show you a way to make a backup of it to take it home. Because unfortunately, you simply cannot just copy this folder to my flash drive and I can go home with it. No, that folder does not include your database. Your database over here on phemyadmin, that's in a completely different place and it's not just a file you can drag. So I will show you eventually a way to back it up and take it home with you. But for this first few sessions, we will have to create the, the site again from scratch, which will be good practice. Because think about it like this, when you are more advanced, and let's say you are working on your own website, or let's say you are a web designer and get hired by clients, we will see a way that we can make a perfect copy of a WordPress website that's on the internet and download it completely to MAMP and work on it in MAMP and mess it up and start again and try it and when it's perfect re-upload it. So we will have um, a lesson later on where we find out how to do that, how to transfer a complete WordPress website. But for the moment we're, we're getting the practice of um, creating it from scratch. And you saw that it was, you know, three big steps, create a database copy the WordPress folder to the right place, and then run the installation. Yes, there's sub steps in there, but three big steps. Once you've got the site up like this, we're gonna use the default theme, the really boring, ugly one. Later on, you can pick a cool one, but right now we've got the totally uh, basic, boring um, theme. I'm in the dashboard, I'm in the back end, I wanna see the front end. What does this site look to, like for people? How do I go from the back end to the front end? Remind me. Press my site, easy. So click on my site at the top left. Actually, let's turn on the light so we can see this. Click on my site at the top left to go see what the site looks like. Again, pretty boring and all of that. But the idea is that I want to change a few things. I don't want it to say this hello world message. I want it to say, you know, have a cool graphic or say welcome to my site and that sort of thing. The default of WordPress is that we have a, a blog as the first thing that you see. So I'm gonna write some notes like last time and I'll put these notes into Canvas and the web design folder. Got some new notes for today. The seventh 
So here's our goals and what we will do. So the default WordPress has a blog front page. Shows the latest news or posts. We want to change to a static home page. A page that doesn't change every time you upload a new article, a new blog post, or whatever, it's going to change. I don't want that. I want a static home page. Okay, what I also want is after creating new pages, add them to the menu. If I look at the site at the moment, right here in the front end, I just see okay, it's my site. I've got a, a brand new article, Hello World, and recent posts and such, but I don't even have a menu where I can click to go to the other sections of my site. And this basic site doesn't really have much to look at. But if I had different screens that I wanted to go to, I need to create a menu. So that's one of the things we'll look at. And um, so that's uh, add that to the menu. You can have multiple menus and multiple locations. So your menu could be at the top or the side or the bottom or whatever. So once we figure out how do we create a menu, where do we put it? And we'll have some customization that we can put. We can create these cool drop down menus very easily. Uh, we can put links in the menu like to go to Twitter or whatever. So these are some of the things we'll do right now. Let's go back to the dashboard. So click my site again to go back to the dashboard. And then click on the posts link. That is the same as hovering on posts and clicking all posts. Just click on posts. We saw this previously. That was our hello world message. Well, posts are different than pages. Posts are part of the blog. I mentioned this briefly before. I'll mention it one last time briefly. Posts are part, part of the blog. And change often. Pages are static screens that don't change as often. I might not change the home page very often. I might have an about screen that I put all about my company and don't change it that often. I might have um, a contact screen that has a contact button but then not, not much else. Um, so that's what we want to do here. We want to create some pages because in order for us to set a static home page, we need to say the home page will now be this particular screen. So these are found under pages. Click on pages. And by default, we've got privacy policy and sample page, which I never saw anywhere when I visited my site. I didn't see anything about a button that says, you know, view the privacy policy or the sample page. That again is, unless I put a page onto a menu, I might not ever see it. So after we create some pages, we set the home page, then we will create a menu. So from this screen here, obviously, let's click on Add New at the top. Little pop-up pops up. I'll close that, and we'll call this Home. This is going to be your brand new home screen. And here, maybe I'll write something like, hello and welcome to our site. You'll find, I'm just putting stuff. You can put that if you want. Although for the extra credit, I don't want you to put that. I want you to put something real for the extra credit. So I'm creating a home page. And just like any word processor, I have the ability to select and bold. And I can also go in and put, um, bullet points or images or all of this cool stuff behind the scenes all of this is still HTML so that's cool instead of having to write the HTML code and misspelling it and such I can click on add image and it'll do it for me so I'm not really gonna put too much meaningful here I'm just showing you that you have all of this formatting that is very easy to do just a just a WYSIWYG interface what you see is what you get so if I want to make my text bold, I press the bold button. If I want to align it, I press that button instead of having to write the code for it. Although I could further do advanced things in code. Notice on the right side over here, 
if I know some CSS, I can add some CSS classes and IDs and then further define them here. We'll talk about some of this advanced stuff eventually. I can quickly do like background colors of these various elements. And for the moment, I just want to create a simple like home screen, whatever. I'll refine it a little bit better later. And I'll click on the top right corner, Publish. On the top right corner, we can save it or we can publish it. I want to publish it. One of the great things, again, about MAMP, doing it inside of MAMP, is that this won't be visible to the real world until I upload it into the real world. So I can test it and I can prepare it until I'm ready to then publish it to the real world. And here it's giving me one more quick message. Are you sure you're ready to publish? It's about to be public. It will be immediate. But again, it's not on the real internet, so that's fine. I'm not worried about it. And if this is bothering me, I can say, don't remind me every time there. I know what I'm doing, but I'll leave it as is and I'll just click publish. Home is now live. Let's click on my site so we can go visit the site one more time and see our amazing new home page. Hmm, it's still the blog post. This is what I'm saying. The default of WordPress is that it's going to show your latest blog post. I want to show that home screen, but it doesn't do it by default unless we go to the settings and tell it I want that, that home page that I just made as my home page. So in our notes here, which are also inside of the readings for the week. How to add a static home page. Step one, create a page. Probably call it home. It can be welcome, it can be start, it can be index, it can be anything you want. But whatever you call it, next step is in settings. We have an option to then set um, that home that page as the home page if you go back to if you go back to my site we have settings reading under settings and then reading so I created the page I'm gonna go back to my dashboard I guess I'll put that as the next step in the dashboard In settings, you'll see reading. We have various other settings. One of them is reading. And here it is. It's saying, my home page currently displays my latest post. I don't quite want that. I instead want a static page. OK, which one? Um, home or sample. Obviously not sample. It's home, the one that I just created. If you are still going to write blog posts, they need to be stored somewhere. So I would put them in another page. I didn't create a page for my blog or for my news, so it's not listed there. I'll do that later. I should have my pages created first before I set them here. But I can do one or the other in any order. So I'm not going to set any posts page yet. I don't have a page for them. I don't have a page for my posts, my blogs. But I do have a page for my home page. And any other setting is fine for the moment. Just click Save at the bottom. And then Visit Site. Save that. Click My Site. There we go. There's my home screen. Instead of the blog post, now it's got whatever I wrote there, which is not too much or nothing meaningful. But now I've got my own custom home static screen instead of the blog posts. That hello world message is still over there somewhere in the recent posts area. But I've got a new static home page. Did that work for you? Anyone need a little help on that? Did everyone set their static home page? Question?
so here we've got the home page um, on any other kind of website. So let's say I've got a website where I review movies and I have this welcome screen that says welcome to my Victor's Movie Reviews site. On this site you will see whatever. On most websites you have other screens that are commonly part of the of the site that you would like expect to be there. So let's say common screens on most sites. Anyone have any opinions? What are commonly viewed screens on many sites? What? About, about yes, that's a good one. About us, what the site is about. Anything else? Contact us. How to get in touch with us? Anything else? Yeah. Follow us. So if it's like a real estate site, it would be like properties. Let's say generically products. Um, what you're selling. Yeah. Now, obviously, if you're a realtor, you're selling houses or whatever. So yeah, whatever the product is. So here are some common ones right here. I think I heard here. Yeah. Follow us. Follow us. Yeah. Or oftentimes that's follow us on social media. So maybe, you know, there's follow us on Twitter, etc. So here's some ideas of some screens that we might have on different sites. These are screens that might not change that often. These are going to be pages. Common screens in most websites, well, these are pages. These are not going to change too often. The about us information, I might write a paragraph or two and have some cool pictures about us. And I'm not going to change it too often. Same thing with contact us. Products may change. That's a special case, which we'll talk about later. And social media also might not change too much. So let's create two more screens for just for practice. Let's create an About Us screen and a Contact Us screen. These are going to be pages. So let's go to Pages and add a brand new About and a brand new Contact page. Back to my site. And the shortcut here, Pages, Add New. You're going to see some shortcuts. Instead of going to all pages and then clicking Add, I can have Pages Add New. Or I've got another shortcut right at the top here. New, what do you want to do? A new post, a new media page user. There's going to be some shortcuts. So let's go to New Page. And keep it really simple. Just contact us. Publish it. I'll fill in details later, like a cool contact form or other such information. Publish. Click Publish again to confirm. Or if you don't want it to keep reminding you, again, you can turn that off. So you can press Publish once and it's done, or you'll press Publish twice. So publish twice. And I'll do one more. I will New Page About. and publish that. If I go back to all pages, just to confirm, this is what we've got so far. WordPress gave us a sample page. We'll probably delete it later. Privacy policy, they give us a starting point. That's more important if you're doing some sort of um, e-commerce site where you're selling stuff. You want to um, show what are you doing with people's information so we have a little placeholder there that's useful there's the home page that I create that we created a moment ago and it's set to our front page notice how it then gets marked like that and then I've got a contact and about okay great so if I go to my site to see those pages they're not there yet because we didn't put them into the menu okay so we talked about adding a static home page. Great. We talked about some common screens. Great. How to create them. And we'll say, by default, you may not have a menu that shows all the pages you created. Sometimes I see that WordPress does add them automatically. I usually assume that it doesn't for some reason. So then we have to create our own menu that shows whatever links we want. 
such as the link to the about page, the contact page. So that would be in the dashboard appearance menu and then menus. There's a sub screen that deals with creating and um, displaying menus. It's inside of appearance. Let's go back to my site. If you're not in the dashboard, let's go back to the dashboard. Appearance menus. So appearance and menus. In my case, it says create your first menu below. Does anyone see anything else besides that? Does everyone see create your first menu? OK, I think so. Good. Sometimes for different people, it's different for some reason. I don't know why. But if it looks very different, of course, let us know so you don't get lost. But right now, it says I don't have any menus. In the screen, the first time you see it, it's a little complicated because you've got the sidebar here plus a menu structure here and edit up there. Well, first of all, we don't have any menus yet so in this menu structure area on the right let's give this a name we'll call this main menu and then click create menu give your menu a name click create and this can be anything you want main menu makes sense because i could have a menu in the footer or a menu on the side this is going to be my main menu for the notes when you go to the appearance here, if you don't have any menus, uh, create one by adding a name and pressing create. So that's what we just did. We will say menu names can be anything, but try to name them to make sense. Try to name them so that they make sense, because I can create multiple menus. On my top menu, I can have seven links. In the bottom or the footer menu, I can have two links. On the left menu, I could have you know four links. And if I give them different names that make sense, I will be able to identify them and work with them a lot easier. Next, when you have a menu, set the location and then add items to your menu. Now, this is a little backwards logically, but I want to show it this way because people always forget this. People create the menu. People add stuff to the menu and save it, and then the menu doesn't appear still because there's one more step. Add the menu to a location in your design, to a location in your theme. Set the location in the theme. People forget this. If I write it in the order like this, which is the logical order, create the menu, add stuff to the menu, save it, people forget that third one about setting it to a, to a place on the screen because it's a little button that's kind of out of the way. So I put it in this order that create the menu, set it on screen even though there's nothing in it, then add stuff to the menu, and then you shouldn't lose your menu. That's found right here. Display location. This menu is currently empty. Add menu items from the left. There's no items in the menu. It exists, but there's nothing in the menu. And it's not set to anywhere. It won't be visible even if I add 20 things to it. This particular theme has three locations, a primary menu, a footer menu, a social links menu. Unfortunately, a lot of times they don't really explain themselves where exactly these will appear. Primary, is that at the top, in the center, on the right side? Footer makes kind of sense that it'll be somewhere at the bottom. Social menu, where is that? On the left, the top right. Sometimes you just have to select one and then go view it and see where it appeared before you make a choice, before you settle on where you're putting it. 
but oftentimes the primary menu will be somewhere near the top. So I'll set it to primary and then save. Then from the left side, here's the third step, from the left side I'm going to select what do I want to show on my menu. Well, I made an About Us page and a Contact page, so I'll select them both and then Add so that those two pages get added to the menu. So go ahead and do that. Select About Us, select Contact, and then Add to Menu. and then save. And then let's visit our site. We'll look at more nuances of this, but let's go visit the site to see what we just did. This, uh, this is a menu that we created. We set it to a location. We added items and saved it. Now let's view. Let's visit the site so we can see what it looks like. OK, so in this particular design, which I hate every time I look at it, I can't wait to switch to another design, at the top, there they are, About Us and Contact. And when I click on the About Us, I go look at my About screen, which I didn't really write too much, but that's something. If I click on Contact, there's my Contact, fine. And uh, whoops, how do I get home? I don't see a Home button. Shh, that's too advanced. <laughs> yes, you can click on the name of your site, but if I also put a Home button on my menu, that will help people go back to my home screen. But I can type, I can click the name of my site and I go back home, yes. But let's add also to the menu, why not make it easy? You know, we're obviously all web savvy here and we know that. But a lot of people might not and they don't see a home button and they don't know how to go back home. So let's be obvious and let's put a home button. Because depending on demographics, which we'll talk about later, who's your target audience? Depending on demographics, savvy people might know, yeah, you click on the name of the site and it takes you back. And others might not know, so they're looking for the home button. Now, it was so long ago, remind me, how do I get back to edit menus? Appearance. appearance. I don't see an appearance button anywhere. What do I do here? My site. Menus. Oh, look at that. There's a shortcut there as well. But yes, I could go to the dashboard, and then appearance, and then menus. Or I've got a shortcut here, my site menus. I want to add this home screen. Select home and then add. The order that you see them here from top to bottom is the order that you will see them on screen, usually left to right. I want I want home to be the first item. You can drag these easily to put them in the order you want. So maybe I want contact, maybe I want home, so I'll drag it up to the top first. And then maybe I want contact second. Okay, I'll put it second. Cool. So what happens here, however, if you're not careful, this is indented. And if I were to visit my site at this moment, things that are indented now become drop-down menu items. I may or may not want that. I may or may not want the item to be a drop-down menu. In this case, I don't. Why would contact us be hidden inside of home? So the good and the bad about this is that you can easily make sub-menus, drop-down menus, by just indenting them a little bit. But if I just wanted to rearrange them and I wasn't paying attention, I just made a drop-down menu. I don't want that. So just make sure they line up like that on the same level on the left, and then they're on the same they're on the same level, so they're not drop-down menus. And I would see something like that, home, contact, about. If I did want a sub-menu, I can just indent it like that. And to get really advanced, I can make a sub-sub-menu. Why might I want a menu inside of a menu? Any, any opinions? Why do I want something inside of something, maybe? Maybe more space. Maybe design-wise, sure. Maybe I don't want so many things crowding. Maybe I've got a products button. 
and I want that to drop down to show the different types of products, cookies, cakes, um, pastries. Maybe I want those as a drop down menus. Now, depending on the design as well, these will look differently. And this, again, this design is so terrible. This, the drop down menu of the drop down menu looks like that. So, okay, we'll change that theme eventually. Anyway, I want all of these just to be on the same level, no indenting. When I visit my site, notice what I'm doing. I've got it in different tabs. So instead of like going back and forth over and over, you can open a new tab or a new window when you right click. That way I can have the two different screens. And since you all have some nice big monitors there, you could separate them into two different screens. Mine is um, mine's a smaller screen, but I can have, you know, move one screen to the side there and one screen to the side. And I can have the dashboard on one side and the, and the front end on another if you drag the window to the edge. I usually won't do that because my screen's a little different size than yours, and then therefore some things might look too small or, or, or scrunched just because the screen is different. But I like to have two different tabs, one for the dashboard, one for the visit site, so I can quickly go back and forth. Now I've got that, home contact about. Did that work? Anyone having some trouble putting that menu together like this? Let's see for the notes here. Okay, so appearance menus, add items to your menu, save it. Save any changes. And then uh, visit site. Actually, what we can also say is rearrange the order top to bottom of your items. Or uh, create sub menu items by indenting. Is it site to test? We'll say note. Depending on the theme, the design of your site, you may have multiple locations for menus. You might have to test each one out to find out which you like. In our particular theme, we had, it was called what, primary menu, what did it say, primary menu, um, footer, what's that, social, there was one primary social links and one more like footer or something. So that particular theme had three possible places to put our menus. Um, let's explore that a little bit more. Footer, social. Again, it doesn't explain itself too often, but some, but this often means that if you put a menu here full of social links, they will be the links of Twitter, Facebook, etc. This is the perfect case why I have a menu for my main items and I have another menu attached to the links perhaps or the footer. So let's create another menu. We've got our main menu for one area. Let's go back to menu screen here and let's create a new menu. Uh, it's kind of weird that this is not like a real button, it's more like an underlying link. There should be like a real button to click on. Let's click on create a new menu. We'll call it social menu. Alright, so we, we click to create, we give it a name, social menu. We click, say, uh, we click create to save it. And then we set it before we forget. And then it doesn't display. This will go in the social links. Save that. Question? 
that's going to depend on your theme. So your particular theme doesn't have that. Um, do you have any other named locations? What are the ones yours called? Okay, interesting. So your theme just has one place to put a menu. You can create another one here just to test this out if you'd like. You won't be able to apply it to another location, but still it's important to know like switching between menus. So just go ahead and create another one for the moment. Okay, so I have social menu. I, at I attached it to a location. I want to now put links over to my Facebook or Twitter or YouTube or or, or Twitch or whatever, um, I don't have a page on my website that lists my Facebook or whatever, but I don't want that. I want a link to go off somewhere else from our possible items here. How do you think we add a link to some other website, not inside of our website? Custom search. Custom links. Search would search only inside of your site. We want a custom link to go off to some other website. So let's open up this section here, custom links. So, okay, what's the address and what's the text? So whatever you want to put here, I'm going to try, um, I don't know, Twitter. If you have a full Twitter address, you can put it if you want. I'll just put the Twitter homepage, link, Twitter. This is saying, what's the link, what's the URL to go to the website, and what's the text to display on the menu? Once you set that, click Add. This will get added. Now make sure you're adding this to the social menu, not to the same main menu. If you're still on the main menu, you have to switch between them up here. Select the menu to edit. I'm editing the social menu. This should not be the social, this should not be the main menu. We're adding a custom link to the social menu, a separate menu. I'm gonna add maybe three in total just to see what it looks like. Um, I'm going to Add maybe Twitter, Facebook, Twitch, add menu, and I'll add Facebook or YouTube. And one more. Just adding some examples of, of, of links, social media, social networks, but in my case We'll go to a certain menu, but if you've only got one menu location, just switch between them to see what it looks like. Save the menu, and then visit site. After I add some items, I'll save the menu, I'll visit site. And in my particular case, because of my theme, the 2019 theme, it creates little icons of the different networks I put in there. Depending on the theme, it might not display as icons. It might just be words or, or whatever. But in this particular theme, it's got some nice icons that sort of like glow when you put your mouse over them. And then when I click the link, it goes to the website. Now, when you, when you click on these links up here, contact or about us, those are known as internal links. So we'll see over here. Menu items can have two types of links, internal and external. Internal links to different screens of your site. They stay in your site. A person clicks about and they're still on your site. External is the opposite. Links that go to some other website somewhere else. Links to another website. Now I'm linking to my company Twitter. It's still my Twitter, my company Twitter, but it's on a different server. It's on a different um, web address. So it's still an external link. And whenever whenever you're on a website and you click a link to go to a completely different website, doesn't it often open in its own tab or its own window? Right now, when I clicked on my YouTube link, it goes to YouTube, but it stayed in the same tab 
if I were to close this tab it would lose my website I have to go back to find it what I'm saying is that oftentimes you click on these links and don't they open automatically in their own um, in their own tab the default is that when you go to an external link it doesn't go in its own window it doesn't go in its own tab yeah you can right-click and do it yourself but it might be good to have it automatic that when a person clicks it opens in a new tab we can set that back on um, on the dashboard here let's make these so that these links open up in their own window um, these are my links when you click the triangle to make some edits I can fix the URL if I misspelled it or change the text. And these are the only options I really have at the moment about editing this link. The thing about WordPress, um, the cool thing about WordPress is that you can do a lot of different things. The bad thing about WordPress is you can do a lot of different things. And what that means is sometimes there's just a lot of buttons and where do I go and sometimes these options are hidden. There is an option that is hidden at the moment to open a link in its own window because there's just so many things that could be visible that not everyone needs everything, so sometimes things are hidden inside of screen options. You'll often see a screen options tab at the very top of most screens with hidden options that you might not always need. We need one of them at the moment, so let's do this. Go to the very top and select screen options. And we have here show advanced menu properties link target. Once I turn on link target, I then get a new option down here, open link in new tab. It was there all along, but it was turned off, and the screen options was always there. We never, ne never noticed it, maybe. And I want to turn on link target, show an advanced menu property, link target. Really advanced, I can attach CSS classes to my menu items and then write CSS to further edit my menus that'll be later this is what I'm looking for now I want to open link in a new tab I want Twitter to open in a new tab and YouTube and Twitch or whatever site I have and then remember to save Remember to save and then go view your result. The difference just is that when you click one of these, they open in a new in a new tab, in a new window. See that? YouTube opened in a separate window, and if I close YouTube, I'm still back on my original site. Without adding that option, a person clicks and they might lose my site. Putting that in the notes, we will say here, external oftentimes opens in a new window. You need to set the option in your menu to do so. By default, the link doesn't open in a separate window, so we have to go to the options there and turn it on. Talk about one last thing and then, and then wrap up. This should be enough to um, have your goals for the week, but here's one more thing. Um, this site that we've been working with all along making some pages and menu items. Well, this site, just like any other site, is uh, made out of code. If I look at the code of my site, um, it's code. I recognize some, some stuff there. Most of it I don't because it's much more advanced. But this is still all HTML code. It's about 150 lines, this one screen here. Uh, WordPress lets you go and look at the code of your site. And we can find that right over here. Also under appearance, you 
editor. Let's click on that for a moment. Appearance theme editor. Oh, we get a big pop-up, a big scary pop-up message. What does it say? Heads up, you're, you appear to be making direct edits to your theme in WordPress, blah, blah, blah. It's just trying to scare you to tell you you're about to make changes like in the deep down secret areas of your of your site. You can go back or you can understand. Okay, I'll click understand. And there it is here, starting to reveal. This is a CSS file at the top. This particular theme has a CSS file with, with a few lines of CSS, only about 6,000 lines of CSS. And I, if, if I kind of understand it a little bit, I can go in and make changes. CSS syntax, the, the, the point of learning, of doing the CSS lesson was not to become a CSS pro, but to understand, hey, this code looks like CSS. And I kind of understand that if I write this property colon value, I might be able to edit it. And so 6,000 lines, but they break it down into, if you want to go edit you know, your, your text and your headings or your menus, there's a section for that down there somewhere. Just kind of randomly, I'm going to browse down a little bit to pass the comments uh, right over here. Uh, what's something that maybe is meaningful? Heading 1, heading 6, comments. It seems to be like setting, maybe doing some fancy stuff with arrays or whatever. But it's uh, set up in a way that, okay, something like this. So, oh, I can kind of see that the unordered lists, bullet points are set as disks, but sub menu items are circles and decimals. So, 2,000 lines in there. And on the right side, I see then these are the other pages, the other screens that my site is made out of. Um, I have various other CSS files. But I will often see, OK, what about this? Footer. If I click on Theme Footer, there's a div, there's a footer element with an ID, and then a div with a class. And I kind of can read a little, hey, there's a link right here. I can read that, but then I see a lot of other stuff I don't understand, and that's fine. WordPress does let you see behind the scenes to everything that is behind the curtain. And if you have the skills of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you'll be able to make any changes you want. They also throw in a lot of PHP code. So there's some PHP code right here. If not empty, show the blog. So WordPress is powerful, full-featured, complex. Behind the scenes, it's various languages. And if I know some of those languages, I can go in and make some changes. I recognize some of these tags, not some others, but some of them. This is found under the Appearance Editor. You're always able to edit the code of your site if you know what you're doing. So just as a final note, you can look at the raw code of your site under Appearance, Theme Editor. I will say here, warning, only do so if you know what you're doing. So after, after taking our other classes, like CIS 152, that one focuses on HTML and CSS for a whole semester, or CIS 165, that one focuses on JavaScript for a whole semester. After taking those classes, after learning more on your own and practicing, you will have then the full toolkit of being able to fully read and write and understand these web languages. In the meantime, WordPress uh, gives me a nice button to click on or something to drag on, menu items to select, and I can still make really cool websites. But if I know the code, I might be able to go in here and make a quick change right here if I know what I'm doing. <laughs> this is what I want to talk about. This is what I wanted to talk about for the day to be able to guide you to what you need to do for uh, the assignment of the week. If you go back and read that again, remember you have to create various pages on your own site. Um, then you have to add them to the menu. Um, so you just check the instructions there. Now, 
how you can do this is how many of you have did some of this work at home on your own personal computer on MAMP? Raise your hand. How many of you managed to do it that way? So at your own home computer, the site that you worked on last week is still there. You want to add what's required um, to that site from last week. If you don't have that set up at home, you can create a brand new WordPress site using MAMP like we did in class today. If you want to do it in in the labs here, you can do it here as well. Of course, we have time today until, what, 6.30. So it's kind of in two parts in, in that you have this discussion, the Padlet that you want to do first, which is an idea of what kind of website do I want to make. Once you answer that, then you can go to the next one about, OK, let me start to put some of these pages that are required to eventually get me to my, my website idea. Right now, I might have a great idea, and I don't know how to execute it yet. That's what we will continue to learn in the various weeks. So you don't have to have it fully figured out at the beginning here, but you want to have some ideas. And then you want to do the three things that are required for the assignment due by Sunday. Turn in the screenshots, and, you, and you've got the assignment. It's all based on what we did right now together in the lecture about creating pages, setting static home page, setting menus, and so forth. I need to be able to see that you can do it on your site. Remember, you always want to focus as much as possible about your site in terms of, this is what I care about. If I turn in something here with just this gibberish, uh, well, I want you to do this you know, for real. It's not just an academic ex assignment for class. This is eventually going to be a real website. And when we come back next time, yes, we're in class. We're going to need to create the site again. It'll be good practice. And then I'll start showing us how do I take it home with me? How do I back it up and archive it to go um, do it at home or at the library? Because unfortunately, you cannot just copy this WordPress folder to my flash drive and go. There's other pieces that we need, and we'll learn how to do that later. That's the general idea. Any questions on anything we talked about today or any of the homework stuff? All right, so we'll have some lab time now. Take a break if you'd like. And if you'd like to keep working in class to get it done, great. We'll be here. Class ends at 4.30, but then lab ends at 6.30. If you came in a little bit late, don't forget to sign in. I passed around the sign-in sheet um, right here. If you need any of our help, call us over, and we'll be here to help. <laughs>